Hello all, welcome to the second session of Management Principles and Applications. The current session is the second topic under the unit Introduction. It is Coordination Mechanism in the Organizations. Coordination Mechanism Now what is a coordination mechanism? It is a kind of a subsystem of a bigger social system that harmonizes or synchronizes the actions of the people or organizations within it. So if we take at a unit level, let us say our body is a whole system and it has got certain subsystems like, you know, brain, hand coordination. So without coordination, there is the body cannot work in the, in the same way. In the organization, there are key resources, there are certain subsystems, but there is another subsystem and that is coordination, which is going to make all these key resources work. So wherever a relation subsists between two or more individuals or groups in the organizations, their actions require coordination in some form. And this entire network of coordination among the different subsystems of the entire so, uh, social system that is organization is known as coordination mechanism. Coordination in management. Let us review some statements from our management experts and try learning what they have to say about coordination while managing. So Mooney and Riley they say that coordination is an orderly arrangement of group efforts like i told you it's a group and the effort is going to be effort of coordination is also about the group to provide unity of action in the pursuit of common goals see everywhere people will gather for some common objective it can be commercial it can be non-commercial so there are groups that are formed for some specific goal but they need a unified action hence they need the coordination in the words of charles worth coordination is the integration of several parts into an orderly whole to achieve the purpose of understanding now he is not only talking about the objectives but he is talking about the understanding so there are certain common objectives but everyone understands that as well that we have to achieve that common goal and without integration of us or these you know several parts there is not going to be any synergy hence coordination is important breck says that coordination is balancing and keeping together the team by ensuring suitable allocation of tasks to the various members and seeing that the tasks are performed with the harmony among the members themselves. Now this is a beautiful uh, point Breck is highlighting. Uh, you remember the division of labor in the 14 Fayol's principles? It is talking about that, that how division of labor should be done or should be carried out in order to keep together the entire team in a way that it balances each other's work. So it cannot be that I give maximum work to one person and uh, you know expect the, that person only to work as a manager. So I have to take care how people are skilled, how I have to give them the work so that it is well coordinated and I achieve the end result. According to Mary Parker Follett, the first test of business administration should be whether you have a business with all its parts so coordinated, so moving together in their closely knit and adjusting activities, so linking, interlocking, interrelating, that they make a working unit that is not congenic of separate pieces, but a functional whole or integrated unit. Now this definition actually imagine a machine which is having a having so many different parts so these every part has got its own function and without even a small part the machine will not work 
in the similar way in the organization there are different functions of management so you know there there is they have to do planning staffing directing controlling and then there are different departments like finance department like hr department like legal department so all these departments have to function together they know what they have to do production department manufacturing department so all all these parts are coordinated interlinked and they know so the management's responsibility is to interlock them seamlessly relate them seamlessly so that the end product the end outcome is are the desired objectives now features of coordination coordination is the integration unification synchronization or like we have called it harmonization of the efforts of departments to provide unity of action for pursuing common goals a force that binds all the other functions of management i hope i have discussed it in the previous slide well the management of an organization endeavors to achieve optimum coordination through its basic functions of planning organizing directing and controlling so the management of an organization is important because it is going to coordinate between the function now coordination is the function of management which ensures that different departments and groups work in sync now the syncing is important the important feature of coordination are the first one it is essential for group efforts and not for individual efforts so whenever there is one person working in the department maybe you know then then he doesn't need that much coordination but in case of a group yes there has to be that coordination that synchronization that harmonization which is going to lead to your objectives now it is a continuous and a dynamic process it is not something that once uh you know uh, the, the you you have performed that function and then you'll stop coordinating with people you will do whatever you want to do imagine a situation where a one person is going uh, in in east direction the other is going in the west direction everything is going haywire uh, th this cannot work in that way it has to be a continuous process that there is that understanding between people that whose end product will become the uh, the the initial product for the other one to work upon and obviously it emphasizes the unity of efforts so there has to be this unification it helps in the integration of functions all the functions different functions are integrated to become a whole it is the responsibility of every manager in the organization so you know every manager would be Uh, carrying out this coordination function well and then only the things are going to be as per their desire and the last is revise so it is it is important that this coordination is revised at different times so the skills of people they may be changing because skills are also dynamic maybe some person has come up with another degree or something which he can do so he can do some other kind of work and hence he can be given some other responsibility as well hence the coordination will change so it is essentially a dynamic process coordination as a vital part in the organization now there is some this theory part um according to giddens when people act in organizations they also create and recreate fundamental elements of social interaction so there has to be some social interaction between people when they are working together now the concept makes an important contribution in the organization and the information system so these social interactions are going to contribute in the uh, the whole an organizing act can also be viewed as coordination so organization is nothing but coordination one important purpose of coordination is to formalize actions thereby reducing undesired variation and to control and to anticipate action 
now it is also important that you can forecast what is going to happen and hence you can control and you can diverge your uh, key resources in a manner that they benefit all so this is also a coordination part in control mechanism henry mintzberg has distinguished six coordination mechanisms from organizational design literature let's see what are those according to him the first one is mutual adjustment the second is direct supervision then standardization of skills and knowledge then standardization of work processes standardization of norms and standardization of output now let us see one by one what are these and what mintzberg meant by these coordination mechanisms how these six mechanisms are important in an organization to have a synchronized effort to have a coordinated effort and why would they do that coordinated mechanism will lead to what the desired objectives of the organization okay so let the first one is mutual adjustment coordination of work is made possible by a process of informal communication between people conducting interdependent work so now uh, maybe you know there is a one formal communication going on but there has to be some mutual adjustment on the part of the workers in their formal and informal groups so for example uh if let's say uh, you know you have agreed with somebody that you have to give uh, or you, you know uh, give a certain product by the end of the day but you are not pretty sure that how that product is going to look let's say that you know you have to make a form a google form for something uh, you know the specifications but there are some things which you want to ask so the one way is that you uh, keep writing a formal email to the person keep communicating or else you just pick up a phone and ask him that okay i i was writing so you want a full name or or you know you want the salutations so these things are informal right but they are going to make your product more comprehensive hence it actually saves time and it inculcates the relations well as well as uh, it it brings that understanding between the people who are working together hence it is desirable so the first one is mutual adjustment the second is direct supervision now what do you mean by direct supervision the coordination is achieved by one individual taking responsibility for the work of others so generally we do not have very flat organizations we have vertical organizations where there is one manager who is responsible for 10 people then those 10 managers uh, would be reporting to the senior manager all the senior managers would be reporting to the vice president the vice presidents would be reporting into the president or the chairman so this kind of an organization structure works well and why does that works well because there has to be one person who can oversee uh, whatever is going on at the grassroots level it increases the efficiency and also it increases the coordination hence mintzberg took or included it in his uh, coordination mechanism the third is standardization of work processes now what are work processes that there is a production line the product will go from a to let's say h point going through a to b to c and so on now why is it important it is important for the end product so coordination is made possible by specifying the work content in rules or routines to be followed coordination occurs before the activity is undertaken mintzberg adopted taylorism procedures are usually specified by work study analysis so it is all very scientific that all these 
the coordination process takes place before the activity is done. So you will coordinate, you will make an assembly line or whatever is all done before the products get started manufacturing, right? So every time there is a, a rule or a routine that is followed and hence makes a product well. For example, let's say uh, we are in the business of uh, making shirts. Now we know that before making a shirt or before sewing it, you have to dye it right so this is a product assembly lineage there are the the routines that are being followed and then it would be buttoned so it would be stitched and then buttoned and then packed so this whole procedure cannot be changed the similar way and it can be any work process and it has to be followed this, so the standardization is important hence the coordination of these product lines are important to get the greater goal standardization of output now if we do not know or the people who are making it they do not know exactly what kind of product are they going to make is it going to make things difficult yes so coordination has to be there an understanding has to be there a harmonization has to be there regarding the end product or the output so what are the expected results has they have to be communicated to the workers well in advance coordination is obtained by communication and clarification of expected results now it is very important because the individual actions required to obtain a goal are not prescribed this goal setting method is closely related to drucker's management by objectives now, uh, maybe you have studied or we will study it in our uh, later sessions. Peter F. Drucker gave management by objectives. So, there are certain objectives which are being set and then they are being managed. It, this is the similar, uh, on these similar lines, Mintzberg said that we have to do this standardization of output. Then the next is standardization of skills and knowledge. Now, how much are skills and knowledge important in any organization? Yes, these are the key resources we have, right? So, coordination is reached through specified and standardized training and education. Are you aware that whenever you join an organization, you go on a training program of, uh, it depends upon what kind of, uh, uh, you know, responsibility you are going to assume. But everywhere there, ha there is some, uh, you know, training you undergo for that particular job. Why is it being done? So that you are well aware of your responsibilities. So you have the skills and you have the knowledge, but you do not have knowledge about the end product or the expected results from you. So these, no this knowledge and skills are sharpened. So consider it's like, uh, uh, you know, you are a raw log of wood so you have everything in you and there is a lock so you cannot fit in that up till you are being shaped in that kind of a key which can fit in the locks block right so you are being trained to fit into the organization people are trained to know what to expect of each other and coordinate in almost automatic fashion so once you will know the expected results from you, you would be coordinating with people, you would be making, uh, you know, formal and informal interactions, again, to get to the one thing, and that is the desired output, meeting the objectives of the organization. And the last is standardization of norms. Now, this was included in the last or the later stage by Mintzberg. What are norms? Norms are generally values and beliefs. So how norms play an important role? So norms are standardized socialization is used to establish common values and beliefs in order for people work towards common expectations. Now, uh, how are norms important? I give you an example here. 
that if you are a manager and um, you have to work in Japan versus you have to work in India for that matter United States how your uh, you know your thought process would be a little different now in Japan interestingly their way of showing retaliation from work if they are not satisfied with something what they do is they double their output rather than stopping the work at all why do they double the output that you do not have warehouses because Japan is a very small country so they do not have so many spaces so what they do they they double the output so that the the producer or the 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 head who's taking all those decisions it doesn't have the place to keep the things because they know that if they stop the work then it is going to cost the economy the country and they are very very country oriented people hence they do that now in in other parts of the world what happens is if you are dissatisfied you stop working so see the norms and beliefs are different so you have to tackle differently so you have to coordinate things differently hence there has to be standardization of norms in a company in a in an organization that everybody is on the same page everybody believes in something so there is this norm there then can be a norm that uh, in in an organization that it is okay to accept your mistake rather than lying so that's a norm that you can create that you can coordinate with people so that people can work towards the common expectations I'm, I'm just giving you an example about it it can be other norms and beliefs which the management has to understand and coordinate with them and once the there is standardization of norms then the coordination becomes easy so this was all about six coordination mechanisms suggested by Mintzberg. Actually, if you will see, these are only three basic coordinating mechanisms. One was mutual adjustment, that was an informal one. The other is direct supervision, that authority responsibility uh, uh, chain would be created. And then there are standardizations. What kind of standardizations? Work process, output, skills and norms. So all these contribute to the coordinating mechanisms in an organization. We have learned in this session that how coordinating mechanisms are important and significant to achieve the final objectives of the firm. In fact, they are the backbone of the system. Thank you very much for listening and we will come in the next session with another topic. Thank you so much.